بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد حياكم الله وبارك فيكم أيها الأخوة يقول الله عز وجل في كتابه الكريم نحن نقص عليك أحسن القصص بما أوحينا إليك هذا القرآن وإن كنت من قبل وإن كنت من قبله لمن الغافلين الله عز وجل أيها الأخوة هي mentions in the Quran that we relate unto you Ahsan al-Qasas the best of stories through that which we reveal to you from this Quran وكذلك in the same surah Allah تبارك وتعالى he mentions لقد كان في قصصهم عبرة لأولي الألباب that in the story, in the stories of them, يعني the Mursaleen and the Rusul and the Anbiya of Allah wa Taala, that in them and in the relaying of their stories is an ibrah, is a lesson. لأولي الألباب for those who have understanding, for men of understanding, يعني. ما كان حديثا يفترى يعني it, it, it is not a statement or speech that is forged ولكن تصديق لما بين يدي however it is تصديق it is a confirmation for, of that which came before يعني from the Torah and the Injil which was given to or which were given to أهل الكتاب or أهل الكتابين وتفصيل كل شيء وتفصيل كل شيء وتفصيل كل شيء and a tafsil and an explanation and, uh, uh, يعني and, and detail detailing uh, the detailing of everything نعم وتفصيل كل شيء نعم Allah تبارك وتعالى he is telling us that he that in the stories of the Anbiya of Allah and the Rusul of Allah is an ibra lessons and dros for us to take from them from these stories and they are an explanation of everything an explanation and a confirmation of that which came before it and likewise uh, an explanation of everything naam and so could these two verses that we mentioned, they're from Surah Yusuf. They are from Surah Yusuf. And just concerning this Surah, بِإِذْنِ Ta'ala, we intend in the coming days, بِعَوْنِ to cover this story. But the time that we, yani we, we have from the likes of these gatherings, do not allow us to go into detail concerning these, these stories. However, just this story alone, Surah Yusuf, then the Mufassirin, they mentioned or they discussed whether there was a sabab for the nuzul of this surah, whether there was a reason for why this verse, or the, sorry, this surah, this chapter of the Quran, was revealed. From them, those who said no, it was nazalat uh, it, ibtida'iyya, it, it was revealed without a reason. But from them, those who said, rather, there was a reason. A suburb and a reason for the revelation of this surah. And the reason being that the Yehud, the Jews, they intended to test the Prophet of Allah. Nabiuna Muhammad They wanted to test him, put him to the test. And so they sent men to him. To ask him, to ask the Rasul concerning a story of a man, uh, 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 and concerning that story of a prophet 
uh, and those 11 stars that prostrated to him. Those 11 stars that prostrated to him. Yani because they had this qissa, the qissa, the surah to Yusuf, or the story of Yusuf, the story of Yusuf, naam, was revealed to them. It was in their book, as we mentioned in the ayah, or Allah Tabarak Ta'ala, he mentioned in the ayah, tasdiqun lima bayna yadayi, a confirmation, and these qissa, these stories are a confirmation of that which came before it. Yani these stories were mentioned in the previous books. Naam. And so the Jews, they sent men, and when they came, or the men that they sent, they came to the Rasulullah that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala He revealed this surah, and that which gives uh, strength to this position that Surah Yusuf was revealed for a reason is as Allah Subhanahu wa Taala He mentions in the same surah. لقد كان في في يوسف وإخوته آيات لمن للسائلين. That in the story of Yusuf and his brothers is uh, an eye is, is a sign yani, for لسائلين, for those who ask yani, so there were those who were asking about this story yani, the Yehud, they sent men to ask concerning this story from them those who said that, that the Sahaba they asked after verses were being revealed concerning the ahkam, the rulings and so on that they asked uh, the Rasulullah that Allah reveals uh, to us from the, from the qasas of the Anbiya and so Allah reveals Surah Yusuf. And Surah Yusuf is unlike uh, the other surah in the sense that this is the only surah from beginning to the end where we have the complete story of one of the prophets of Allah. Yani in, in one place from beginning in, in taf, with tafsil, yani, with great detail. And as we mentioned, as Allah Ta'ala, he mentions in, this, in the same, same surah. Wa tafsila kulli shay. And a detailed explanation, yani bi diqqa. With a detailed explanation, these, these stories have come with detailed explanation. And so when the Jews, they heard um, the, 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 the surah and the story which they were fully aware of, however, there was ziyada in, in the Quran, in this surah which is revealed in the Quran. They had the story of Yusuf, however, Allah Ta'ala, ta'ala he revealed it with, with tafsil, with um, with great detail which even they didn't have and so from the people of the book those who when they when they hear of these stories in the Quran and the Muslimun when they recite the Quran and they uh, yani read these suwar and these qasas these stories then yani it, it's as it said yani in lay terms and yani it burns them and it burns them when they hear these stories revealed in the Quran with such detail. Naam. From these qasas ayil ikhwa. From them is the qissa adima, which has been revealed in numerous places in the Quran. Numerous places within the Quran in a number of suwar throughout the Quran. And without doubt, you have heard throughout this month as you stood in the salah and you've heard the Quran and you've recited the Quran yourselves, you ta'ala have come across and you've heard this story being repeated. It is that story which all of the Anbiya of Allah, all of the Anbiya of Allah, they agreed upon. اتفقت عليها الرسل وأنزلت بها Al-Kutub All of the books that Allah Taala revealed contain this story. It is the first story that has come in the Quran. Which is the first story? Ikhwa, which is coming in the Quran. Surah Al-Baqarah. طيب. But Baqarah is concerning which Ummah? Bani Israel and which Prophet in, yani, in particular, specifically? Musa alayhi salam. But is that the first story? Even though, okay, طيب. after Surah Al-Fatiha we have Surah Al-Baqarah. But immediately, does the, the qissa of the Baqarah, does it? Naam? Adam. Adam is the first qissa that appears. When Allah Taala he says, what? وَإِذْ قَالَ رَبُّكَ لِلْمَلَائِكَ When your Lord said to the angels, إِنِّي جَاعِلٌ فِي الْأَرْضِ خَلِيفًا 
that I am placing a Khalifa, a successor upon the earth. And just on this point, as a benefit, we know that this is now the topic of our discussion or the first qissa that we begin with, the story of uh, the creation of Adam. And we know he is Abu al-Bashar. He is the father of the humanity. Naam. However, some of you, those who are fathers or even who have young siblings, maybe some of them, many of them, they go through the phase of their, how they're into dinosaurs. They get into dinosaurs. They learn about dinosaurs and they get into the dinosaurs. And they may yeah, and you just, uh, attempt to, or they ask you about the dinosaurs. Or even in the situation of giving da'wah. Giving da'wah to the non-Muslims. Or even the person himself as a Muslim may ask this question. What about the dinosaurs? What about the dinosaurs? And again, it's something... That the, that the non-Muslims they ask well what does the Quran say about the dinosaurs huh remember this Quran Allah what did he say tafsila kulli shay it is a, a, an explanation and detail about everything so where is the di dinosaurs in the Quran then hey, huh khalifa tayyib how do you know this you heard it from me. <laughs> well, it wasn't from me. It was our Sheikh, Sheikh Salih Al-Fawzan, Hafidahullah Ta'ala. This question was asked to him. Concerning the dinosaurs. And just to confirm that dinosaurs, the word itself hasn't come in the Quran. Does anyone know the Arabic word for dinosaurs? Huh? You won't struggle here, Ayul it's, uh, it's practically the English. Dinosaurat. Dinosaurat. Tamam. Tayyib. So, Khalifa. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentions here, Inni ja'ilun fil ardi Khalifa. I am placing upon the earth a Khalifa, a successor. And so, Sheikh uh, uh, Salih Fawzan, Hafidhullah ta'ala, he mentioned how we, don't, we do not reject the existence of dinosaurs. And especially when we have fossils that are, that are there. You can't deny the existence of fossils found in many lands all over the world, even in the Muslim lands, in Egypt, in many places. The fossils. And so the Sheikh, he mentioned that he, this ayah, and the Sheikh quoted this ayah, shows to us that Adam was a successor, meaning there was because the Khalifa is one who comes after yani, so those who, or the one who was before him. Just like Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu was the Khalifa, the Khalifa of the Rasul. And so, this shows to us that Adam, alayhi salam, he was a successor and he replaced those who were already upon the earth. And the malaika, what did they, what did they say? What did they, when, when Allah, he mentioned that he would place upon the earth a khalifa, what did he say? Or what did the malaika say? أَتَجْعَلُ فِيهَا مَنْ يُفْسِدُ فِيهَا وَيَسْفِكُ are you placing upon the earth one or those who, who cause corruption and they spill blood? And why is this? Because anyone who knows about the dinosaurs and how they, uh, yani how they, um, how they portray to us the dinosaurs and their way of uh, yani life was one of where they were locked in a constant battle. The, you had the uh, herbivores and you had the carnivores. And the, 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 the most famous of the dinosaurs, t the T Rex, whatever they call it. How they were constantly locked in this battle, the herbivores and the carnivores and so on. Wallahu ta'ala alam. Meaning that the malaika were aware of that which took place on the earth previously. This is from the tafasir that has come. And there, there are. There are there are other explanations. Tayyib. Time doesn't allow us Ilikwa, to go into the details of the Qissa of Adam. But in brief, after Allah Ta'ala, he informed the Malaika that he is placing Adam upon the earth. 
then he, he mentioned to them, or he, and we know through the Quran, that Allah Taala he mentioned, وَعَلَّمَ آدَمْ الْأَسْمَاءِ كُلَّهَا And he taught Adam the names of everything. He taught him the names of everything. And then, those things, the malaika were asked concerning the names of those things. Allah Taala he asked those things, uh, concerning those things, uh, يعني, and the, the malaika, that they name these things. The malaika they responded with, Mother, Subhanaka, La ilma lana illa ma alamtana. Glory be to you. Uh, we have no knowledge except for that which you have taught us. And then came the command of Allah that the malaika they prostrate to Adam that they prostrate to Adam and, um, and we know also that Iblis was amongst them Iblis being from the jinn but he was amongst them they all prostrated except for Iblis Abba was takbar he refused and he was haughty and proud. And this prostration of the malaika to Adam was not worship of Adam, but rather worship of Allah. And so the, the, the scholars, they mentioned that this was a sujood of tahiyya, of greeting. A sujood, or a prostration of greeting. And likewise, a sujood of of Ijlal, yani, and, 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 and uh, yani, in respect of, and magnifying yani, the affair of ilm. That Adam was blessed with knowledge. And Allah created him as one who has ilm. And so out of respect and reverence of knowledge, not worship of, of Adam, but rather, yani, through obeying the command of Allah, then they are worshiping Allah. And as we know, that Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala has made for for for, for every ummah shir'at wa minhaja yani a legislation and a, and a way for every nation and so some things were allowed for some nations or at particular times but not allowed at other times and so in the story of Yusuf we know that at the end of the story his brothers and his parents they prostrated to uh, Yusuf alayhi salam. However, this is, something, this is something which is forbidden upon this ummah. Forbidden upon us to prostrate to, to, uh, yani to, to others or to other than Allah. As for in that, the, in, at that time and that nation, that was something allowed, but again, out of tahiyya, respect and so on. Of greeting and respect. Naam, not out of worship of the, those things. Worship we know, ayyul ikhwa, is, is directed only to Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala. Tamam. Thereafter came the mention of Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala commanding Adam and his wife to, to reside in Jannah. وَقُلْنَا يَا آدَمُ سْكُنْ أَنْتَ وَزَوْجِكَ Jannah. وَكُلَا مِنْهَا رَغَدًا حَيْثُ شِئْتُمَا وَلَا تَقَرَبَا هَذِهِ الشَّجَرَ فَتَكُونَ مِنَ الظَّالِمِينَ So the command to live in Jannah and to eat thereof with, يعني, freely, with pleasure and delight, but not to come near this tree. امتحان وابتلاء from Allah. A test from Allah. However, وسوسة Fawaswasa, mother, Lahum Shaytan. That Shaytan, he whispered to them, Wallahuma bi gurur, and he deceived them. And, Fa'akala minha, they ate from it. Fabadalahuma, so atahuma. Naam, Watafika, Yaksifani, Alehima, min, Waratil Jannah. That after eating from the tree and disobeying Allah, then they're private parts became revealed and they began taking from the leaves 
of Jannah and covering uh, the, 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 the uh, private parts. Naam. Until Allah Azza wa Jal, he mentions قُلْ نَحْبِطُوا مِنْهَا جَمِيعًا Go down, all of you, upon the earth or down to the earth. بَعْدُكُمْ لِبَعْدٍ عَدُوْ Some of you, enemies to, to others. And shaitan being an enemy, and after he, he swore that he would misguide the offspring of Adam from the straight path of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala yani, and thereafter came from them as Allah tabarak wa ta'ala he mentioned, he mentioned and all of you you hear yani, uh, most if not all of the khutb when the uh, khatib he begins with the khutbatul haja ya ayyuhan nas taqu rabbakum alladhi khalaqakum min nafsin wahida yani, fear your lord the one who created you from nafsin wahida created you from uh, yani one soul wa khalaqa minha zawjaha and he created from that one soul his partner yani his wife hawa wa batha minhuma rijalan kathira wa nisa and then from them he sent forward many men and women naam yani much can be said ayul ikhwa concerning there is much more that is mentioned in the quran however yani we uh, that there is bikhtisar shadid ayul ikhwa there is yani severely uh, yani uh, making it concise and brief but we mentioned the fawaid and some of the benefits that we take from the story of adam alayhi salam upon you ayul ikhwa is whilst we're still within this month this month has many terms or is referred to in many ways shahrul maghfira Shahru Siyam, Shahru Qiyam, the month of Qiyam, the month of fasting, the month of uh, forgiveness. But it is likewise we know Shahru Quran. It is the month of the Quran. The Quran was revealed within this month. Yani its revelation began uh, in this month. And so it is that month of reflecting upon the Quran, reciting it, pondering upon it. And we know that the Quran has been revealed. Kitab anzalnahu ilayka mubarak. Yidabbaru ayati. Reason why it was revealed that we may reflect upon and ponder upon its verses. Naam. And so, upon you, Ikhwa, as we go through very briefly some of these stories, whilst we're still within this month, take full advantage, Ikhwa. Full advantage. Use this time to go through the Quran. Yani, you, alhamdulillah, wa jazakumullah khair, and you're attending. The salah, you're hearing the Quran, but as we just mentioned, it requires tadabbur, reflect, reflecting upon it, pondering upon its meanings, and the, and the ayat and the benefits that we can take, and the lessons that we learn. And so, in your own time at home, go through the Quran, the translations, if you, ha if you have to. If you're, if, you're, if you're not able to understand the language of the Quran, then the, exp the translations. The meanings of the Quran. Reflect and ponder and, and, and learn these benefits and learn these stories in detail because there is in them is an ibra, the ulil albab. From these benefits, ayyukwa, that we take. First and foremost, this is qissa azima. It is a tremendous story that Allah he mentioned in numerous places in the Quran. Sariha ayyukwa with outright clarity, which leaves no doubt in the story of Adam, how he was the first man. He's the, he's the, the father of all of the humans, Abu al-Bashar. And there is no doubt in that. And in fact, all of the Anbiya, they, they were agreed upon this story, all of the books that Allah Taala revealed, likewise mentioned this story. Likewise, we know that Allah Taala He created Adam with His two hands, and He created him without mother or father. يعني خلق من غير أب 
wa um. He was created without a mother or father. As for yani, the rest of mankind, or if we were to look at mankind as a whole, then we say that the people, and the scholars, they mentioned that the people, as it relates to their, 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 yani, them coming into this world, they are of four types. The first is the one who came into this world, bila ab wala um. The one who came into this world without a mother or without a father or mother. And he is Adam. Second, the one who came into this world, bi ab wala um. The one who came into this world with a father but no mother. And that is Hawa. That is, in English they say Eve, the wife of Adam. And we know she was created from the rib, the, the, the curved rib of Adam. The third, the one who came into this world, bi'um wala ab. Isa alayhi salam. And he came to this world with a mother, no father. The fourth, you guess? Everybody else, every side on nas, the rest of the people. Mother and father. Tamam. Likewise, what we learn from the story of Adam, alayhi salam, is that Allah, ta'ala, he blessed him and favored him with al-ilm, with knowledge. And that Allah, ta'ala, ta'ala, if he blesses someone with knowledge, then he must recognize that blessing. He must recognize that blessing. And he must say like the malaika said, Subhanaka la ilmana ilmalana illa ma allamtana. And likewise that he doesn't speak, he doesn't speak concerning that which he has no knowledge of. Likewise, I know this is well over 50 minutes of uh, the Reminder was supposed to be around 15 to 20 minutes. Um, but it's very difficult, Ilkhwa. Very difficult to, you know, given the immense benefits uh, and the, the greatness of these stories, it's, it's difficult to, to you know, uh, put all of that into 15 minutes. But one of the brothers, he did say, Zid, increase for Zidina. And so we've increased. Um, and just to finish off, Ilkhwa, um, we learn the virtue of ilm. Since Allah, ta'ala, he ordered the malaika to prostrate to Adam. As we mentioned from the tafsir that has come, and the reason that has come concerning why that command came, the command of sujood uh, to Adam, is due to that knowledge that he was blessed with. And shows, it shows to us the virtue of, of knowledge. Likewise, the story of Adam is a, a proof of the madhab of Ahli Sunnah, the way of Ahli Sunnah wal Jama'ah, al muthbitin lillah ma athbata li nafsih. Those who affirm for Allah that which He affirmed for Himself, min, min al asma' from His names, the asma' al husna and as sifat. Huh? That they affirm for Allah what He affirmed for Himself. So Allah in, 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 that, uh, in the response of the malaika. Subhanaka la ilma lana illa ma'allamtana innaka antal Mada al-alim al-hakim The malaika affirming names for Allah Affirming for him that he is al-alim, the all-knowing Al-hakim, the all-wise And so Allah Taala through these stories he is affirming names And throughout the Quran he is affirming names for himself And so we affirm for Allah that which he affirmed for himself And the sifat likewise Allah Taala he said When Elsewhere in the Quran, when Adam he refused, uh, so when uh, Iblis refu- refused to prostrate to Adam, Allah what did he say? Ma manak and tasjuda lima khalaqatu biyadi. What is it that 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 prevented you from prostrating to the one or to that which I created with my two hands biyadi in the duel? Allah Taala He used the duel. My two hands, and so we affirm for Allah what He affirmed for Himself. Since Allah is the one who said this, 
And we don't say like the people of Ta'wil, the, 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 from, the, from those who came, from the Muslims, and began to interpret these verses in a way which Allah Ta'ala, or His Rasul, did not intend. Nor did the Sahaba and the, uh, the Salaf of this Ummah yani, uh, uh, affirm them in such a way. So those who came along and they said they couldn't accept that, that Allah has hands. And so they said that the meaning of this is that Allah created him with his two powers. Two powers. Yani the, the qudra of Allah, the, uh, the power of Allah is, is dual, two. And so they say that the meaning is his two powers. And as Sheikh, as Sheikh Ibn Thaymi, rahimahullah, he mentioned that when we resort to this, behavior that we say that no it, it can't mean yadain which Allah clearly affirmed for himself that it must mean this then it is as though we're claiming that Allah was not capable of saying what he should have said and you know better and we can say it better that he's, he's two powers he wasn't ca capable of saying this he wasn't capable of saying it and he should have said it and this is what we're saying he, he meant as though Allah wasn't able to say that subhanallah and so the madhab of Ahlul Sunnah is that we affirm for Allah that which he affirmed for himself. So we affirm that Allah has two hands and he created Adam with his two hands. However, we also affirm as Allah Ta'ala likewise, he said about himself, There is nothing that is uh, similar to him. There is nothing comparable unto him. Now, likewise, we affirm or what we take from the story of Adam is the affirmation of Al-Kalam for Allah, that Allah speaks. Look at all of these verses, many of these verses. وَإِذْ قَالَ رَبُّكَ لِلْمَلَائِكَةِ When your Lord said, وَقُلْنَا And we said. Allah has speech, affirming for himself speech. فَتَلَقَّى آدَمْ مِنْ رَبِّهِ مَاذَا كَلِمَات when, when, when Adam received from his Lord kalimat, words, Allah spoke to him. And that is why when the Sahaba, they asked the Rasul was Adam, was he a, 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 a Rasul? He said, he, he, a Nabi, he said, Naam, Mukallam. Mukallam, yani yeah, spoken to by Allah. He was addressed and spoken to by Allah. Naam, so we again likewise affirm that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he speaks. Again, his speech, just like his hands, is not like the hands of the creation. And his speech, likewise, not the speech, not like similar, similar not, not like the speech of the creation. Likewise, what we learn from this amazing story is the aqibah of a tawbah and the ta'ib. The end result or affair of the one who repents. And the end affair of the one who doesn't repent. Naam. Look at Adam. Alayhi salam. He committed that sin. Yani of, of, of disobeying Allah ta'ala and eating from the tree. Hmm? But immediately after he made tawbah and Allah ta'ala, he forgave him. Hmm? And so his end uh, affair is al jannah. Look at Iblis. When he disobeyed, look at his outcome, the nar. And so we see the end result of the one who disobeys Allah but then repents, follows that with repentance. And the end result and outcome of the one who disobeys, but he doesn't rush to that tawbah, and he doesn't make tawbah. We learn likewise the serious nature and the grave nature of al-hasad, al-hirs, and likewise al-kibar. The danger of these sins or these actions, hasad, envy. The ulama mentioned that the, that the first sin, usiyallahu bihi, the first sin that Allah Taala was disobeyed by way of was al hasad. The first shirk that took place, we know the first shirk that took place was in time of Nuh alayhi salam. That's why he was sent as a, as the first messenger to call back to the tawheed of Allah Taala and to worship Allah alone. But the first sin, the first disobedience was, was yani, the hasad of, of Adam, 
uh, of uh, Iblis towards Adam. His envy. I am better than him. He envied him for that which Allah blessed him with. Likewise, the brave nature of Al-Hirs, that, يعني, that desire and that, يعني, that uh, covetousness, يعني, being um, eager in acquiring something, يعني, and, and, and coupled with greed, or يعني, just an, an eagerness to possess something. And so, Adam alayhi salam and his wife Hawa, why did they eat from the tree? What is it that, that pushed them to eat from the tree? What did Iblis say to them? Hmm? Shall I not inform you of a tree? Hmm? A tree of khuld. Eter, yeah, eter, uh, of eternity yeah. if, you, if you eat from it you'll become immortal live forever and have a dominion which will not perish and so they became Haris Adam and Hawa that desire to acquire that and having Haris can be positive of course uh, being desiring and have, being eager in, in Yani possessing that or carrying out that which is in, dis- in, in obedience to Allah Of course. Hmm? As the Rasul he, he made that dua, Zadakallah hirsan. May Allah increase you in that hirs. If it's, if it's yani, in, in something which is good. But if it is something which is in a disobedience to Allah, then that is blameworthy. And we've seen here the outcome of that. Likewise, al kibr. Kibr was takbar. He was haughty and proud. Iblis. And so he didn't make that toba. And so we see the uh, dangers of these sins. Ikhwa, living in the times that we live, and we see all that which is around us. Living in a time of materialism, Ikhwa. And you may see your brothers being, possess- be, 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 yani, being blessed with something, with knowledge, or with wealth, or with yani, children, and so on. Hmm? Beware of hasad. Beware of envy. Let us learn from these stories at Ilikwa. Beware of these sins. Beware of hirs. In, and, and be having this covetousness towards things which will lead you towards the, 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 the disobedience of Allah. And so those who desire these worldly things, desire that nice car, desire that house, desire this and that. You see everybody else doing it. But you know it involves interest, for example. Riba. You know it involves disobedience to Allah. Hmm? But you have that hirs, you want it, that eagerness to possess it. And so you fall into this sin. Beware of kibr likewise. Beware. And we're going to, inshallah, to try to connect this to the story which we'll mention tomorrow. The two sons of, of Adam and that which took place uh, between them. The final point, ayy lukhwa, is... What, what we learn from this story is the severity of a single sin. And disobeying Allah just even one time. Look how Adam, due to one sin, due to one sin, he was expelled from Jannah. He was expelled from the Jannah. The Muslim, he doesn't become lenient in the affair of sins. Even if, even if it's just one sin. Yani look at Adam, how just for one sin he was expelled from Jannah. Look at the Sahaba, how in the battle of Uhud, in the battle of Uhud, when they disobeyed the command of the Rasul, the, 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 the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when they were commanded to, to, to maintain their position, to maintain their position on the mountain, but when they disobeyed, they disobeyed one action or ma'asiya. Yani just a single ma'asiya. Qutila sabi'een. Seventy from the Sahaba were killed. And it led to them being defeated in the battle of Uhud. Naam. Look at the woman 
who, due to her locking away the, 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 the cat and how she didn't allow it to, to drink and eat from, يعني, from, from, the, from the earth, didn't give it any water or food, and it died. Due to that one sin, she's from the people of the fire. And so the Muslim, he, he doesn't look at the sin or the, or the minute nature of the sin. Like Bilal ibn Sa'ad, Al-Awza'i, he mentioned from Bilal, Bilal ibn Sa'ad that he mentioned, لا تنظر إلى صغر المعصية Don't look to the small nature of the sin, ولكن انظر إلى عظمة من عصيت but look to the greatness of the one who you are disobeying. فتوبوا أيها الإخوة فتوبوا إلى الله أيها الإخوة في هذا الشهر repent to Allah أيها الإخوة this is that month. If يعني you're not going to repent in this month then which month are you going to repent in أيها الإخوة? شهر المغفرة the month of forgiveness we still have أيها الإخوة the best of nights to come but in the we we reach that but this is the opportunity again as we've mentioned go to your homes seclude yourself with the book of allah seclude yourself with these qasas these stories that have come in the quran for indeed there are immense benefits and the reality is we haven't done justice we haven't done justice to to uh, the likes of these stories, we will be, uh, we will continue with the Taala tomorrow. Um, apologies for the length, of uh, but given that it's Bank Holiday weekend, I'm hoping that most of you are not, يعني, you've got time off. Um, but we will continue with the Taala uh, tomorrow, inshallah. Zakum Allah khairan. Hada wa sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Nabi Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Subhanakallah.